question seven on our 2019 VCAA exam, and it looks like we've got a funky looking fuel cell here. We've got some stuff being pumped in from an external thing, um, and we've also got a load here. But let's have a little read of what it actually is. It's worth eight marks. We're going to be doing some redox chemistry, that's for sure. Uh, we've got a zinc cerium battery is a commercial rechargeable battery. So it's not only a, um, a fuel cell looking thing, it's also rechargeable and it comprises of a series of cells. During recharge, these cells use this. Let's just move on to what the actual question is. Here are some equations. Write the equation for the overall discharge reaction. So overall discharge reaction means we need to add these together, provided we have them in the right order, and they are not. Let's look at this. You can see here the E0 value of this is positive 164, sorry, 1.64. So therefore, it needs to be above this. So what that means is this is going to be um, reacting here, and it's going to be reacting with this thing here. So therefore... Um, Let's also note the fact that we have got um, electrons. We also need to multiply this guy by two because we need to make sure the electrons are the same. So therefore, during discharge, these things are going to react. So CE bracket CH3 SO3 bracket 4 aqueous. And we're going to need two of those. It's going to react with two hydrogen ions. We're going to cancel out our electrons. Um, that's going to then react with uh, what have I got to do? this here, my zinc solid um, and 2H, so CH3SO3H aqueous. And it's going to form um, my products, which is going to be this guy here, which is going to be 2CE bracket CH3. SO3 bracket 3 plus 2CH3SO3H plus this one, zinc CH3C uh, SO3 bracket 2 plus 2 hydrogen ions aqueous. Now this is really ugly. I'm going to still start cancel things down now as well. It's going to cancel out my two hydrogen ions from both sides. I don't need those two. And I also see the fact that I've got these on either side as well. I've got two of them. So I'm going to cancel that out there. So what that leaves me with then is I'm going to then use this part down here for my answer. Leaves me with two of these things. 3SO3 bracket Four. That's reacting with a zinc solid, and that's going to be then going to form two of these things. I don't need a bracket there. Take the bracket away. CH3SO3 bracket 3, and one of these things. ZN CH3 uh, SO three bracket two aqueous that's uh, all aqueous apart from the zinc so that's all good so therefore i've got this happening as my overall reaction now let's have a look at this again in this tank oh these are just given as ions so i probably didn't actually need to write the entire thing here i could have just said this is being the selenium ion rather than this whole thing here that would have made life a bit easier I can write that down here. Two of these plus zinc solid. And that's going to form two of these, which is going to be my three positive, And that's plus zinc two positive. All right. And I can see the positive because this is a four. So therefore, that's why a four positive there. And this is a three. So therefore, I think I have that there. All righty. Good. That's a bit of a pain. And that's only for one mark. That's terrible. Let's move on. Identify the oxidizing agent during the discharging and justify your answer using oxidation numbers. So what's happening here? I've got discharge, which is my reaction. Now the oxidizing agent causes oxidation and is reduced itself. So therefore the oxidation number, it should be going down because it is being reduced. So therefore it must be my 
CE for positive as it it's oxidation number decreases from positive four to positive three. So therefore I can just choose the fact that this is what's my oxidizing agent because it's being reduced. Remember oxidizing agent itself is reduced. Its oxidation number goes down. I can simply see the fact that it's going down from a four positive ion down to a three positive ion and Bob's your uncle. We're happy days with that. Um, the other way to looking at it is the fact that the zinc here starts off at zero and it's definitely going up to two positive. We can see it here. It's zero here in my reaction. It's becoming an ion, which means it's going to become oxidized. So therefore, this has to be my oxidizing agent. And we could also justify it in that way. But anyway, that's the answer to those two questions. Let's move on to part C. Determine the theoretical voltage produced by a single cell as it decharges, discharges. Sorry, That means I need to get the difference between these two numbers here. So therefore, I'm going to go on. And I'm going to say uh, 1.64, take away um, bracket negative um, 0 0.66 bracket is 2.4. So it's going to be 2.4 volts as it discharges, because remember voltage is the difference between our two numbers here. Write the ionic equation for the reaction occurring at the positive electrode when it's recharging. Alrighty, so positive electrode when recharging, this is electrolysis, that means it must be the uh, anode, so therefore it's oxidation, All right, and it's an ionic equation, so therefore we're just going to be talking about the ions here. Now recharging, again, that's this stuff going backwards, so therefore we want the oxidation as it's going backwards, so therefore I want to have the CE one. So it's going to be CE3 positive. Um, and what's going to happen? It's going to be forming CE4 positive. So therefore, it's going to be losing that one electron. And that should be my answer there for the ionic equation for the recharge at the anode. I'm going through it very systematically. I'm saying recharge. Um, I'm saying positive electrode at recharging is the anode. So therefore, it's oxidation. I've got my discharge reaction here, so I can try and work out what's going on there. And that's the answer, hopefully. Um, next question, part E. Other than transporting ions between the electrodes, describe one function of my membrane. What does the membrane do inside of a, a battery? Um, key focus of it is it is to separate the two reactants and stop a direct redox reaction occurring. That's fundamental of what our membrane is there to do. If the membrane was not there, as soon as these things get pumped together, we have a straight discharge um, or a straight redox reaction happen and the electrons simply go straight from the oxidant to the reductant, is it? Either way, um, the electrons simply get swapped across and they don't go through our external circuit. So the membrane is there to separate the two reactants and stop a direct reaction occurring and force electrons through, through if we can spell through, the external circuit. Excuse my writing, but I'm explaining it anyway, so it's all good. That's it. Specify one factor that would limit the life of a cell. So what is going to limit the life of a battery? And that is extreme temperature. Alrighty, temperature. Um, batteries don't like extreme temperatures. So therefore, you want to keep them at a reasonable amount, um, reasonable temperature. So generally, changing or um, extreme changes, I should say, changes perhaps, changes to temperature would impact the life of the cell. What else may impact the life of this cell? If I could try and think of other things. Um, I don't know. We've got an, a zinc electrode that's part of our reaction. So I guess if the zinc electrode breaks down, it's probably not ideal. But I think that's probably the best um, call and response answer for 
the life of a battery or a cell is to do with extreme temperature changes. The more temperature fluctuation, the worse your reactions are going to be. Is not good. Experts have regarded the cell as a hybrid between fuel and secondary cells. Why will this be the case? This question screams out just what does this these two things mean? So let's define them. A fuel cell has external supply of reactants and secondary cell cell can be recharged both are features of this cell and there we have it um, basically if we have to explain something let's define it first and then try and link it to our question and yes this definitely has external things as soon as i saw this question i started thinking fuel cell and then when it said rechargeable i said um secondary as well so um electrolysis is involved so there's our marks for that defining the two things and then explaining that both are the features of this cell and saying what fuel cell means what a secondary cell means and you should be right that is eight marks worth. Um, it's a bit tricky, I guess, a bit random um, in terms of these questions, in terms of these chemicals that are being used. But if you follow patterns and if you are systematic about what you're actually doing, you should be able to follow along with what's happening. Um, mine is pretty ugly by the end of it, um, but I do try and tidy it up towards um the end at the start of it it looks like an absolute mess but then I, when i try and cancel things out it starts to look a bit neater and then i can try and say can i simplify this even more and that's when i got to this ionic system here happening and that is question seven from the 2019 exam done